I did a video about flex culture a couple of weeks ago. But Paulina, why haven't we seen it? I never posted it. I actually asked my friend Anna, is it okay if I edit this video, send it to you, you watch it, tell me what you think? Because I know that she would be honest with me and say, no, 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 you can't post that. But while I was editing, I was like, no, I cannot post it because I was talking about people and it just got way too, um, not not judgmental, but it got way too like, I was highlighting people, I was calling people out-ish. Not really, but I was just saying like, I don't agree with you, but I agree with this and this and this, you know what I mean. So I never got around to posting it because I felt like it was way too controversial. And here I talk about my feelings, I talk about it all, but I just felt like I couldn't post that. So deleted it. Today we're gonna use the Tidy Marvels palette and talk about flex culture. So if you are unaware, I'm gonna start off with this shade. Let me zoom you guys in. The reason I'm talking about this is because I asked you guys a while back, like ask me questions for a get ready with me. You guys know how great I am at actually answering the questions. I did actually answer some questions in that video that I deleted. So, there you go. But I did get a question about flex culture and I thought that I would just answer it for you guys. Like, what are my thoughts? But before we get into my thoughts on it, what is flex culture? And it's basically where you're showing off products or material items in a non-humble way or where you're just showing off what you have and it could be anything it could be cars bags makeup um, travels like how much you actually travel it could be uh, your expensive house clothes you know whatever just material items and a lot of people are now being called out for this because it's sending the wrong message to younger kids you're saying that, you know, this is what you need, maybe to like teenagers saying that you need 50 cars when you grow up or 10 Louis Vuitton bags and five Gucci bags because you cannot just have one. And obviously I don't agree with that. I think you can have zero and still be happy. But the, the problem lies with like a lot of people actually tend to focus on bags, fashion, and not about everything else. So the people that I have watched that has talked about this, and I have talked, to, I have looked into many videos. Um, I was just like Googling like makeup flexing, flexing culture and all of that because I wanted to see what people were saying from a bunch of different people that I subscribe to, that I don't subscribe to and whatnot, just to see like what are the actual issue here? Like what is the dealio? And I think I got a, I think I got a pretty good, oh, I should have taken Love Bug. That shade is just like, but I think I got a pretty good understanding of what they were saying. I'm gonna take Bugaboo, which is this shade right there. But we're basically saying nowadays that it's not okay. I'm actually gonna blend in a little bit of Love Bug. So I'm starting off dipping into Bugaboo and then ending it with Love Bug. And then I'm just gonna put this in my actual crease right down here. But we are basically saying that it's not okay to show off your designer handbag collection or it's not okay to do like an unboxing of a Louis Vuitton or Gucci bag because how dare you spend $5,000 on a handbag when people are dying. And I get that, but it's always going to be like that. It doesn't matter, like, do you actually mean that people should donate all of their money to other people? Like, what's the point of working hard? What's the point of taking that extra shift if you have to donate all of your money if you cannot reward yourself? Like, I know this sounds super selfish, but that's the way we are built. That's the way we are. And this is coming from someone that doesn't have a lot of designer things. Like I have a couple of Michael Kors bags. And yes, but I don't have a single Louis Vuitton bag, a Gucci bag. I don't have anything like that. And this still comes from me. And the problem I see is that 
they are putting blame into people that's in the fashion industry. It's not okay for them to flex, but for it's totally okay for me in the beauty community to show off my new Tom Ford bronzer. That's not anything to complain about. Or in the same video, I'm showing off my Dior new highlighter palette and my Dior blush and my Chanel bronzer and my YSL foundation. That's totally fine for me to do a haul like that, but how dare you show off a designer handbag? When I was younger, I didn't have makeup like I do today. I had a mascara, I had one blush, I had one single makeup store eyeshadow that was like a brown shade. I wore it at parties. My blush I wore every single day. I used it up. I bought is a new one. I had a big bronzer from Isadora that was way too dark for me that I thought that you should use as a setting powder. So you got this stripe. I bought foundations on sale every single time and I always bought the wrong shade. That was how I wore makeup back in the days and that was how my friends wore makeup back in the days. But today when I see like makeup collection videos from a 13 year old, how do you think they got to that point where they have 100 palettes, 40 foundations, 50 bronzers and 25 blushes? They have it because I and many other in this community have influenced them into getting that into thinking that that is the norm. That is where you need to be like it's it's normal hauling makeup all the time. It's normal to purchase a new eyeshadow palette five times a week. Only having a certain amount of palettes is like, oh, you only have five palettes? <sighs> Damn. Or telling us, you need this new Sydney Grace palette or you need that. I don't understand where you're supposed to drag the line. Like, how is it okay to f not flex on a handbag, but it is okay to flex in makeup? Ooh, you remember this brush back in the days? This is Real Techniques. I've been too lazy to clean my brushes, so I just kind of opened my drawer where I have my brushes and I pulled out a few that was clean because now I have a couple of days off, two, and I'm gonna spend it cleaning brushes. Yay. But anyway, I just throwback. I'm gonna take the shade Spider because I wanna deepen up my little crease. By the way, I did the most fun and beautiful look using this palette the other day. I used Walking Stick and then I used Walking Stick and Fire Butts in my crease and then I used this all over my lid, a little bit of my Tammy Tanuka pigment and I was out and ready to go and it was the most fun look. Thank you, Mel. Did I use a little bit of Scarab as well? Maybe I did, can't remember. When I have watched these videos from people that has done videos on flexing, they, not all of them, but a lot of them have said, did I say that I took the shade spider? That was not what they said. <laughs> but they basically said that they don't agree with the flexing culture and they themselves have a couple of designer handbags for like $5,000, but it's okay because they don't show them off, but they are happy enough to own them, not show them off, even though they are dragging brands like companies for being that expensive. They are saying that it's tacky to own a lot of these items, but still they own them themselves, but it's okay because they don't show them off, but they are, were damn well going to tell you that they have them. Another thing that I've heard discussed is that before flexing was made from celebrities that, uh, that were flexing on the red carpet or in the TV shows like Cribs, when you got to go into a celebrity's house and see all of their cars, you got to see uh, their living room, you got to see their gaming room or, you know, all of this extravagant things that they had. Like, I remember when people opened up their fridge and you could see 
all of the drinks that they had, all of their food. Like, I thought it was so cool to see that, but now people are flexing on social media because we have gotten a lot of people that has gotten um, rich from doing YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is, they are now the new kind of celebrities. And I wonder why is it okay for someone that is known for being a great artist or a great actor or a great singer to flex, but not someone that is known for being good at, for instance, makeup or fashion or just are, or just a person that's funny that we like to watch. Why are they not allowed to flex? Like, where should we draw the line? How is it okay for a celebrity to do it? on a TV show, but damn you, if you do it on YouTube, that is not okay. Let me go in with the shade Marvel, which is this one. Mar yes, Marvel or Marvel. And let me just paint it on. Oh, so beautiful. Like, I actually really enjoy this palette. I think that Mel and Sydney Grace did a fantastic, fantastic job. However, this palette is a very interesting color story, so it always pushes me to do something that I'm not used to, and I love that about it. I, I was a little bit iffy on it in the beginning, but every single time I've used it, I've been like, oh, what can I do? How can I create different looks, <laughs> looks in order to. in order to make a beautiful look. And I feel like I usually achieve that. Another thing about flex culture that isn't really great is that since people are seeing other people flex with whatever it is that they do, travel, makeup, bags, cars, houses, food, whatever, <laughs> they go into depth. And a lot of these creators or influencers go into depth because they want to man maintain this lifestyle. I don't care if, if influencers gets into depth in order to, depth, debt, in order to, I'm Swedish if you didn't know, in order to maintain their lifestyle. It, it's their choice, they can do whatever they want with their money, but it it is something that I see in the beauty community as well because what is popping at the minute? It is showing off new products, reviewing new eyeshadow palettes, the newest Fenty foundation, or the newest lip gloss, or my Chanel collection, or my Kaleidos collection, or whatever it is. It is buying a lot of new stuff, and that has also become super normalized. And why is that? Well, it is because we see all of our favorite creators just show off all of these new things all the time. They are normalizing a Black Friday haul. You should spend so much money on Black Friday. Or they are normalizing, uh, you know, they have these um, videos that I also used to do, like January hauls, February hauls, what I bought in March. Oh my God, I bought 58 pallets in April. And again, if you do these videos, I don't blame you. I have zero problem with them. I think that it's totally fine. It's just like, why is it okay to do those kinds of videos, which I know a lot of these people, they do them. They show off their new makeup, their Tom Ford, their Chanel, their Dior, you know, all of these very expensive brands and also affordable ones. But when you take a lot of affordable products and put them into a, a pile, that pile will cost you so much money because you just wanna build your collection. You just wanna try something new and that is wasteful. That is so unnecessary, but you are allowed to do whatever you want with your products or with your money. I have zero problem with it, but I just don't understand where you're supposed to drag the line. I'm gonna take my Milani primer. This is the Soft Focus Glow. And the thing is, I'm gonna see if it works today, but a lot of the times when I do this, it doesn't work. So 
what I've had to do most of the times is actually just to do it like this, put it in here and then just push out the product, a blob like that, and then moisturize my beautiful skin. And that blob was pretty big, so it covers this ginormous face. I think that we say that it is worse to flex when it comes to, and I actually don't like the word flex, but I think it is easier for us to put blame on fashion creators because we are in a different industry like we are pretty much in the same industry it's still like beauty but fashion and beauty or uh, they aren't really the same so we can put more blame on that on, on them on them but then we can also put more blame because it is obviously going to be fewer people who can purchase a bag for five thousand dollars or a car for a million dollars than to purchase a new eyeshadow palette for fifty dollars or 129 eyeshadow palette from Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath that is obviously different and I acknowledge that but it's just like which 15 year old or 13 year old needs to have a makeup collection they need to have 50 foundations, 20 eyeshadow palettes or 25 eyeshadow palettes like no, no. maybe you need a colorful one and a neutral one but that's it. I'm taking two pumps of my Uma foundation that I have in the shade Fair Lady TN3. And every time I say that, I want to say like TN3. It's a dynamite. And then nude sticks. I'm taking one and a half pump of that, which I have in the shade 1.5. So this is too dark, too light, too full coverage and matte, very glowy and sheer. Love a great combination. Like even today when I talk about, for instance, my favorite person on Instagram, which is VC Pants, I say that, oh, I love her because she is so relatable. Like she, well, not relatable, but she has a curated collection. She has 15 eyeshadow palettes. I mean, 15? Does she need it? No, she has it. And I think that that is a small number when in fact it's like 15 is kind of a lot. It's unnecessary and I love her. I think that she's amazing. I am putting no blame onto her. I have 60, 70 palettes, something like that. No blame is put on her. I have, again, zero problems with her. But I'm just saying that we have normalized having like these big collections. And one thing I gotta say that I used to hate watching, I thought they were so tacky was like, what I got for Christmas. Those videos, I hated seeing them because it was a lot of like, oh, I got this uh, new makeup or, you know, this um, beautiful home decor or clothes or um, skincare or shoes, bags, whatever. Money, 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 money. And I've realized over the years that that is a problem on me still gotta be honest i still think it's pretty tacky when 25 year olds show what they got from their mom or parents and it is this big ginormous makeup pile or clothing pile and i'm like you're 25 it's time to cut the umbilical cord. But again, I have realized that the problem lies with me. The problem is that I was jealous. I talked about why I hate my birthday. I can link that video right up here. I grew up with a mom that didn't have a lot of money. Um, I was all constantly asked like, what did you get as a birthday gift? Not because people knew that my mom didn't have a lot of money. Well, maybe, like obviously they knew, um, but it was never, um, from my classmates trying to um, put shame on me or trying to make me feel bad. It was just like, it was a question that everyone got. Or when you came back after summer and the teacher said, oh, let's everyone go around the table, 
telling us what they did and people were like well I went to Italy and then we went to France or oh, my family took a three-week vacation to Thailand and I was like I, I was with friends when they weren't on their vacations they were like oh what else did you do no that was it watched TV when they were away um, ate strawberries barbecued spend time with fam that's it and they were like waiting for you to say <laughs> more things anyway I, I'm going besides the point I've come to realize that what I got for Christmas is because I thought it was uncomfortable when people asked me what I got for Christmas and I looked at these people that did this these kinds of videos with like big eyes and realized that I was so jealous I wanted what they had and I couldn't get it because I how, how what, what would I supposed to do that like I couldn't put more money into my mom's hands and be like get me this I remember I wanted one of these like underwear when I was younger it wasn't any specific print or label or brand that I wanted on these kinds of underwear but they were super popular back in the days where they were just like normal and then they just had a little stripe like a very thin stripe and then they covered the butt so it was sort of like they started out like a thong but then when they came back to the butt it covered the butt so it was still appropriate for me to get them it wasn't like a thong and I was like five years old I wasn't five but you know what I mean like I was a teenager beginning of my teenager years maybe I was not a teenager 11 12 something like that but you know what I mean and I got I remember I opened them up because I ended up getting them for Christmas which was a lot of fun and I remember the joy like I got this three pack I still remember what they looked like they were like blue like turquoise 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 blue with big blue prints on them like big blue darker blue flowers on them and I was the happiest person I had ever been and I let me tell you this I have always wanted nice things in life maybe because how I was raised maybe because I didn't have a lot of things and I saw my friends getting a lot of things and I obviously wanted them because I longed for them I was super jealous but I didn't take my jealousy to the point where I couldn't be around them I was like oh my god you have so pretty things like you're so blessed I'm happy for you I never was like the kind of person that looked down at them and never like complimented their new blazer that was expensive or belt or whatever it was like I was always so happy for them most of the times anyway maybe sometimes I wasn't and I have had friends that has been pretty spoiled by their parents but I it's just the way that they were raised it's not on them it's their parents fault if there is an error with it but I remember like my mom used to purchase like these magazines and we would look at designer things together and we would dream about it we would look at them and appreciate them from afar and if I got the money to purchase one like I know I could save but you know what I mean like if like if I got a lot of money I would purchase that no questions asked and I would show it off on social media I would be the kind of person that they didn't like I'm taking my Fenty powder and I'm just gonna set my under eyes. I'm using like a ColourPop setting or highlighting brush. I don't really know what it's called, but I think that these brushes works great for this kind of purpose, just to like set it down. Oh, and I love the scent. Mmm, so nice. I did actually want to go in with this Kaleidos highlight actually just on my eyes this is the new Mars Melter they had an old Mars Melter and then they came up with a new one that looks completely different so I don't really know why they did it but it's not a highlight for me so I really want to use it on my eyes instead so I'm just gonna take it on a little brush and I need a mirror <laughs> I think actually I'm gonna spray it because now that I've set my face, I don't really want it to, I don't want fallout. So I'm just kind of taking it um, in the middle, like right here. You know what? I'm going to take it with my finger instead. Then I don't have to worry about the fallout and all of that. 
Ooh, super peachy and cute. Like, look how much peachy this eye is compared to this. I think they blend really great together. And then I'm just gonna do my under eyes really quick. So I'm just gonna go in with the deepest shade that we used, which was Spider. But again, like talking about the depth thing, no, I say depth, like it's deep, but I mean depth. Again, Swedish girl over here. English isn't my first language. I'm actually gonna take Love Bug under my eyes because I thought that that was so cute and that was actually this shade. And then I'm just gonna do a little bibbidi bobbidi boo. Maybe it was a little bit too cool tone. I think I'm gonna take Flutter By as well, which was the first shade that we used. If you don't remember, I'm gonna show you. I hate when this shade, I hate when some people are like, oh, I'm gonna take this shade and this shade. I'm like, please, can you show me? I'm too lazy to look up which shade you're using. <laughs> and then I always forget that this palette has highlighter shades. So I'm gonna take the shade Web. It is... I got a text from a brand that probably wants me to spend money on them. But this shade is, I was about to say that it wasn't that blinding, but boy was I wrong. It does look like a satin almost in the pan. It doesn't look that intense. So I kind of remembered it not being that intense, but um, I would say this is intense. But okay, let's again talk about the depth thing. Not depth. Damn, I keep doing it. But you know what I mean, okay? Hear me out. A lot of creators in general go into debt because they wanna create hauls. They wanna create content. And instead of like being creative, realizing that you don't actually have to go into debt to do that. Like you could, for instance, um, if you're a fashion creator, you could do like a lookbook, you could do like how I style different pieces, like old pieces, new pieces, whatever. I, I'm not really into the fashion industry, but you know what I mean anyway. Or if you are a makeup creator, you could do videos like this where you just sit down and talk smack, which I do all the time. I purchase way too much makeup. I do, like I purchase more makeup than the normal person does. So I'm not sitting here trying to be holy or, but but you know, I, I just don't think that there's anything wrong with flexing because I feel like we are adults. We should take responsibility for our own actions. It's so easy to put blame on others, but in reality, like for instance, let's say, let's just take me as an example. I am not into depth debt well i am because i i went to school i have those money to pay off or that money to pay off for my tuition totally fine but other than that i have nothing to pay off of pay off on pay off off but one of my goals has been to purchase less makeup because I, personal reasons, I wanna use what I have. I like getting use of the things that I've bought. I like getting use of the things that I like. So just because of that reason, I don't wanna get too much new stuff in, even though I get new stuff in often from PR or if I purchase this or that. But I try really hard not to get too many things in. And I have realized that if I, for instance, watch a lot of creators that does videos with new products, that does hauls or that does uh, review videos of new eyeshadow palettes or a new glowy foundation, I will get influenced into purchasing the same thing that they hauled or featured on their channel because I've gone, I am going to see, wow, that product looks absolutely stunning. So I wanna get that as well. But if I didn't watch them, I would never have known that this product was this great or that this product even existed and that I wouldn't purchase it. So I have unsubscribed to those people, not because I dislike them. I subscribed to them for a reason because I really enjoyed them, but I've just realized that it's not good for me to have those kinds of people in my life because they obviously influence influence me into purchasing things that I deep down inside don't wanna purchase. 
So that's why I would say take responsibility for yourself and unsubscribe, unfollow, or remove those people from your life. Even though you don't know them in real life, they can still influence you and everyone or not everyone, but a lot of people say, I don't get influenced by ads, I don't get influenced by creators, influencers, or celebrities. Yes, you do, you just don't realize it. Instead, if you are mad at Kim Kardashian for doing something, don't follow her. Yes, they are gonna write things about her in the news, but just don't click on that ad then. Don't read that article about her because it isn't that hard. I took my Milk Makeup Bronzer, I took my Fenty Bronzer, and now I'm gonna take my Catrice Glow Patrol Highlight, and then we're gonna go in with a blush, and then obviously I need to <laughs> put on lashes, but I was just in the moment, so I felt like I would just continue talking and do my makeup, and then I could do like my mascara off camera at the end. Is that okay with you? I don't know, hopefully it is. So that's pretty much what this video was about. Me just, you know, talking. I'm not saying that these people that I've watched are wrong. It's just, I have a lot of questions. I understand where they're coming from. I really, really do. But some people talk about waste when it comes to fashion. And I'm like, but what about the waste that we do with makeup? But I guess that it's different because they are friends, so they can't really bash on each other. It's easier to bash on bigger creators that they don't know in real life or don't know on social media, that they don't have a alternative motive to keep friends with. Maybe that's it. I really wanna take the blush in this palette. This is the Natasha Denona Diamond and Blush Palette, and I really love this cream blush. Ooh, but does this work with... Yes, it does. If it doesn't, we will make it work. Ah, went in with way too much. You know what I did? I dipped my brush in and got more. <laughs> oh wow, how beautiful. Um, okay, what I will do in this situation is to just take a little bit of paper and then take my brush, as you can see, I hope you can see anyway, that I get product off it, just because I'm gonna do it on a flat surface, because I don't want more product. So you can see, we got product off, and then I'm just gonna start blending. Don't you worry, this is going to be very, very manageable. We will be able to solve this. We're just gonna ship, ship, ship. And then we take our little sponge, Ship, ship, ship. Then I'm just gonna go in with this. This is my Milk Makeup Bronzer. I'm not going in with any additional product, just um, what I had on my brush. And then, which brush did we, we use for our Milk Makeup? No, for our Fenty Bronzer. Was it this one? I think it was. Okay, maybe this wasn't as solvable that I hoped, but it did the trick. I would like just a small little dibble dabble on my nose because I love that. And a little bit on my forehead. I saw something I really wanted to take. I wanna take Manhattan from Ofra and um, Melted Matte from Too Faced in the shade Me So Pretty. I don't know if this is gonna look that great with the eyes, but if it doesn't, I will just change it. And then, Too Faced, me so pretty. Oh, just love this. It smells like paint though. And then, I just like to pat it out. This does not go with the makeup. Maybe the same combination, but Pasadena from Ofra. Yes, let me do that off camera, uh, do my lashes and all of that, and I will be back. I took Pasadena from Ofra, and then I took Me So Pretty from Color, um, Too Faced, and then I took just a smidge of this gloss from Kaleidos. This is the shade Hypnotize, and I just took like a little dibble dabble on it because it became like super dry. My lips became super dry, so just patted it out, and uh, this is the finished look. I like it. I think it's really cute. What I don't think is cute is this that I have on my head. That, however, 
that little sigge. Oh, it's so fine. And then boost mousse. Yeah, this is not pretty either. But I'm going to do, to, to, to I'm going to the gym later, so I didn't want to like straighten my hair because it is looking kind of all right. But I just oh, I can't be bothered, okay? Anyway, these are just my little thoughts on flex culture. It's not like I'm saying I am correct. It's not like I'm saying my opinion is the one <laughs> to have. It's just opening up the conversation because a lot of the times I feel like some of these bigger creators that talks about flex culture, you kind of have to think the way that they do or else you will be canceled. I don't know, maybe you will cancel me today. If so, that's the way the cookie crumbles. But I do think it's fun to discuss topics and sometimes you just, you don't have to think like everyone else or like other people. It's okay to have your own opinion and um, we shall see how this will turn out with all of you guys. But you know the drill. If you like the video, you like the video. If you dislike the video, then just click the little dislike button. If you have something to share, maybe you want to share your thoughts, leave them down below. Don't forget that you can subscribe if you want to. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.